Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. I'm Chenda from ETH Zurich and I'm going to talk about a synchronous Byzantine agreement with subquadratic communication. And this is joint work with Erika, John and Julian from the University of Maryland. Byzantine agreement is a fundamental primitive in distributed computing. It is used in many contexts such as multiparty computation voting, secret sharing, and many other applications. It allows a set of parties, each with an input, to agree on a common value. And moreover, if all honest parties start with the same input, x, then they agree on x. And these two properties, called consistency and validity, hold even when some of the parties misbehave during the protocol execution. In large-scale systems and applications where the number of parties is substantial, it is important to understand how the communication complexity grows in terms of the number of parties. In this paper, we investigate whether one can achieve low communication when the network is completely asynchronous, meaning that the adversary has full control over the network, but messages sent by honest parties are eventually delivered. More concretely, we investigate the following question. Is there an asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol with subquadratic communication that tolerates a linear number of adaptive corruptions? And note that in a protocol with subquadratic communication, we cannot afford that every party sends a message to every other party, because this would be n squared already. And we answer this question by showing feasibility and impossibility results. On the one hand, we provide a protocol with subquadratic communication that uses a trusted dealer as setup. The protocol assumes secure erasures and an adversary that cannot take back messages sent by honest parties. On the other hand, we give an impossibility result that shows that some form of setup is needed if the protocol has subquadratic communication. And this holds even assuming secure erasures, secret, secret channels, and the same type of adversary. Most of the previous Byzantine agreement protocols, like the works by King and Saya, Mikali, or Abraham et al., are synchronous or partially synchronous. There is a recent paper by Cohen et al. that gives a subquadratic asynchronous BA but where the adversary has a restricted scheduling power. In particular, the adversary cannot reorder messages sent by honest parties in the same protocol step. Let me start with the feasibility result. It achieves an almost optimal corruption threshold since we know from traditional results that tolerating n third corruptions or more is impossible even with setup and even against static corruptions. The protocol relies on two building blocks, each of independent interest. The first building block is a one-time Byzantine agreement. This is a Byzantine agreement protocol that assumes an initial non-reusable setup. The BA has subquadratic communication complexity and small setup size depending on the security parameter kappa. The second building block is an asynchronous MPC protocol that also assumes some setup. Both setups together constitute what the trusted dealer generates initially for the overall protocol. And the task of the MPC protocol is to emulate the trusted dealer functionality and generate the setup for the next protocol invocation. For this particular trusted dealer functionality, we achieve an MPC protocol with subquadratic communication and with small setup size. This approach gives a protocol that supports an unbounded number of Byzantine agreement invocations where each invocation has subquadratic communication. And as a side remark, one can generate the initial setup with a setup free MPC protocol, which will be expensive but only used once. This cost will be amortized with sufficiently many BA invocations and leads to a setup free protocol that supports unbounded number of BAs with amortized 
subquadratic communication. And in the following, I will explain how each of the building blocks are uh, instantiated. First comes the one-time Byzantine agreement protocol. Note that a deterministic solution is not possible due to the FLP impossibility result in the asynchronous model. Our protocol is therefore randomized and actually follows the traditional feldman michali or canetti rabin approach of iterating an instantiation of graded consensus followed by a coin toss protocol. Graded consensus is a primitive that gives a weak notion of agreement. Each party outputs a value and a grade that can be 0 or 1 that intuitively indicates the confidence that a party has on the output value. And grade 0 means that the party is not confident, and grade 1 means that the party is confident. And the guarantees of graded consensus are as follows. If all honest parties start with the same bit, then all honest parties output this bit with grade 1. And moreover, if there is an honest party that outputs with grade 1, this means that all honest parties are in agreement. And our graded consensus protocol is a player replaceable version of Canetti Rabin's protocol, achieving subquadratic communication. And after the graded consensus, we run a coin flip protocol, which essentially gives to all parties the same uh, uniform random bit. Then, what the parties do is um, they iterate invocations of graded consensus and coin flip where each party adopts the value of the coin if the party had grade 0 and otherwise uh, they keep the value from graded consensus for the next iteration. In order to achieve subquadratic communication, we use a trusted dealer that generates some setup. The setup for graded consensus consists of a sequence of random subsets of kappa parties, the committees, where each party in a committee has a proof that it was elected for the committee. Then, in each step of the protocol, a designated committee is in charge of sending messages to all parties. And given that the protocol has a constant number of steps, the message complexity is subquadratic. The setup for the coin flip simply has the trusted dealer compute a random coin value and a random committee. And then it computes shares and gives a share of the uniform random value to each party in the committee. So the coin flip protocol simply consists of each party sending the share to every other party and parties reconstructing the random coin, which will be the same if the committee has an honest majority. And since the number of iterations is bounded by kappa, then the communication complexity is um, poly kappa times n, and the size of the setup is poly of kappa. The second building block is an MPC protocol. This allows the parties to correctly compute a function without revealing their inputs except from what the output reveals. And in an asynchronous network, it is known that it is not possible to include all parties' inputs into the computation. So we say that an MPC has L output quality if the number of inputs included into the computation is at least L. And the set of inputs that are actually included is chosen by the adversary. Our protocol uses an agreement on a common subset primitive, sometimes also called uh, asynchronous common subset or corset agreement. And in this primitive, each party starts with an input and they jointly agree on the same uh, multiset S of size at least L, which is a parameter of the protocol. And also uh, within the set S, at least L minus F of the values are inputs from parties that were honest at the start of the execution. And, and one can um, Think that such a protocol can be implemented using O of L uh, Byzantine agreement protocols. 
And using the one-time PA protocol that we explained uh, before, one achieves a setup size of O of L times kappa and a communication complexity of O of L times um, size of the input times poly kappa N. Now we are ready to explain the MPC protocol. The protocol uses threshold fully homomorphic encryption as a tool and follows the kramer damgard nielsen approach of letting parties evaluate the function over encrypted inputs and then jointly decrypting the final ciphertext. As mentioned before, the MPC uses setup as well. And first, it has a setup for ACS since it is used as a subprotocol. Then it generates a random committee of size kappa. And then the keys for the threshold FHE scheme. And all parties receive the public key EK. And each party PI in the committee receives the secret key share EKI. And finally, the setup also includes an encryption of a random value under the public key EK, which I denote as R um, under the square bracket. Now fix uh, a possibly randomized functionality G that parties want to compute. And without generality, assume that G uses, uh, say, kappa random bits. It uses more, one can always use a PRG. So to compute G, each party first encrypts its input using the public key EK and invokes the ACS protocol with the encrypted input. The protocol outputs the same set S with at least L encrypted inputs. And now parties evaluate the function G under the FHE using the inputs that made it into the set S and the random encryption of the setup. Then the parties in the committee execute a decryption subroutine where each party in the committee simply computes a decryption share of the ciphertext and distributes the share to all parties. And finally, each party reconstructs the output upon receiving enough shares. So the decryption omitted uh, some details which can be found in the paper, like the zero knowledge proofs that parties need to execute to avoid cheating, and also the erasure steps to achieve adaptive security. And overall, one can see that the setup size is that of ACS, which is L times poly kappa, and a bunch of other elements with size uh, poly kappa. And for the communication complexity, in the decryption step, kappa parties send the output ciphertext to all parties. So that is um, O times poly kappa N, where O is the size of the output. And then in addition, one has the ACS subprotocol, which is um, L times size of the input times poly kappa N. For the case of trusted dealer functionalities, where the function to evaluate only takes as input random bits, actually the ACS step is not needed. So the setup for MPC is only poly of kappa, which is the same size uh, as the setup for PA. This means that the output size of the MPC is poly kappa as well, so the communication complexity is subquadratic in this case. Now we move to impossibility results. Let me first mention some lower bounds in the literature. The first lower bound in this direction was the dollar price should lower bound, which shows that every deterministic protocol needs to send at least a quadratic number of messages. This lower bound was later improved by Abraham et al. who also consider randomized protocols. And both lower bounds hold even under a synchronous network. However, they use the fact that the adversary can perform after the fact removal, meaning that even after an honest party sent a message, the adversary can adaptively corrupt the party and get back the message. In our lower bound, the adversary plays with an asynchronous network and has to eventually deliver the messages sent by honest parties. 
it cannot take them back. Our lower bound also holds for uh, randomized protocols and even if we assume erasures and secret channels. However, it is only stated for protocols that have no setup. In a recent work, Rambout showed a slightly stronger lower bound that holds even in the partially synchronous model and where parties have access to an idealized PKI. Now I proceed to show our lower bound. The strategy is to assume the existence of a protocol with Socratic communication complexity and then to consider different scenarios to reach contradiction. In the first scenario in blue, all parties are honest and have input 1. And it will be helpful to divide the parties into two sets, S and S', prime, where the set S contains as many parties as have the corruption budget. Since all honest parties have input 1, validity ensures that all honest parties output 1 as well. In particular, all parties in S output 1. And we consider uh, the third scenario in green, where parties in S are corrupted and crash at the beginning of the execution. Recall that the size of the set S is half of the corruption budget, so the adversary can definitely afford to corrupt all parties in S. And again, since uh, all honest parties have input zero, validity ensures that all parties in um, S prime also output zero. Now we consider a middle ground scenario where we will manage to make an honest party in S output one and honest parties in S prime output zero, therefore violating consistency of the protocol. The idea is that uh, since the protocol has subquadratic uh, complexity, and the size of the set S is linear, we call uh, half of the corruption budget, then most parties in S will communicate with a sublinear number of parties. Then the adversary can choose a party in S uniformly at random, who we denote uh, P, and P will communicate with very few parties. And now the adversary corrupts all other parties in S and will try to fool P to output 1 by emulating towards P the messages as in the blue scenario and will also fool the honest parties in S' prime to output 0 by emulating the messages as in the green scenario. So more concretely, whenever P intends to send a message to a party in S' prime, the adversary interrupts this communication and also um, emulates the blue messages towards P. Note that since the channels are secret, at this point the adversary doesn't learn what P sent. But what the adversary can do is to delay these messages, um, delay this message and first corrupt the recipient. Then he delivers the message to the corrupted recipient, allowing the adversary to learn uh, the content of the message. And now the corrupted recipient can emulate the blue execution towards P. And it also, of course, emulates the green execution towards all parties, all honest parties in S prime. Also, whenever an honest party in S prime intends to send a message to P, the adversary delays this message, corrupts the sender, and uh, in, instead uh, sends a message according to the blue execution to P. The green message is still in the network and is delivered only after P terminates. Then the, uh, the corrupted sender uh, also emulates green messages towards honest parties in S prime. So observe that the adversary can corrupt all parties that communicate in one way or in another with P because P communicates with very few parties. Then, from the point of view of P, all he gets are blue messages, so he will behave as, as in the blue execution and output one. And similarly, all honest parties in S' prime get uh, green messages from parties in S' prime, 
and their view is the same as in the green execution, meaning that they all output zero and therefore consistency is broken. Here you can find the link to the full version of the paper and the references. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you all at the online conference.